It's time for another BoardCap Recap Podcast. Dr. Smith, thanks for taking the time to go through this with us today. My pleasure. So we had another school board meeting last night, and as always, we started with good news. A couple of events that lifted up, and maybe we should call these lots of smile events because there were certainly lots of smiles. First of all, we had our opt-in signing day. This is through the EVSC's opt-in program last Thursday, and over 120 students signing with our collaborative partners, industry partners, local healthcare partners, you name it, for high-wage, high-demand positions with really endless opportunities for growth. As a superintendent, that may, has to uh, give you a lot of pride. Uh, certainly does, and that event continues to grow. There was a slight bit of pause because we could not do that during COVID, at least publicly recognize individuals. But the other uh, organizations that were left out uh, in what you mentioned earlier are, are military Absolutely, organizations. Absolutely, yes, so they were there as well. Certainly appreciate our young men and women signing up for that commitment uh, for our nation's military. And it really was just a celebration of opportunities for students as they leave our doors and head off into what I think is going to be really bright futures. Absolutely. And one of the founding principles for opt-in was to make certain that our students knew the great opportunities that they have right in the Evansville area. So it really does do a great job of marrying the opportunities with our students. And uh, I think, as you said it best, lots of smiles last Thursday. Most definitely. Also last, uh, recently here, we've done a cause for applause for the month of May. That's our Employee of the Month winner, Greg Johnson. He's the PE teacher at Hebron. I know I've worked with him a couple of times throughout my career. Outstanding individual, and you have a special connection to him. Certainly do. Uh, Both Greg and his twin brother, Craig, were students of mine back in the day when I uh, was blessed to teach for EVSC. Uh, So it, it was with immense pride that it was able to recognize his contributions as being the number one employee out of all 3,400 employees for the month of May. And his brother Craig is a teacher as well at Plaza, so it was really great to have him be a part of that celebration. Uh, And then finally, just a big congratulations to the Wrights High School Band Program. They received a 2021-22 ISMA All Music Award, and I know that just represents uh, the fact that they have a lot of talent there. Right. Well, it really is representative of excellence throughout their entire program. Most definitely. So, And I will say this, too. We didn't necessarily say this last night, Dr. Smith, but it's been so nice just to see all of the celebrations return here now that we're getting back to normal, whether it's banquets, whether it's prom photos on social media. Uh, just great to see all of these students celebrating and back together uh, in what those traditional special activities are. Yes, it is. And then that takes us to the end of good news, takes us into consent items. If you would be so kind, take us through that. Very good. Well, allowance of payments, and for the past two weeks, a pretty light allowance of payments of just $7.8 million. Item 2.03, consideration to prove network equipment to be declared a surplus. So this is the legal process that we have to go through after the equipment has reached the end of its useful life with EVSC. We list all of those things, and then uh, actually individuals then can put a bid, a bid in to purchase. And most of that equipment would be access points, wireless access points. Moving on to 2.04, consideration to prove the renewal agreement with Achieve 3000. We've used Achieve 3000 for a number of years, found it to be very beneficial. So this is basically a renewal moving forward. That's why it's under consent. And then the same could be said for item 2.05. Although we have used this, uh, I think, just in the past year, this is a great digital resource, specifically for summer school teachers uh, in terms of providing additional instructional materials, specifically in the area of reading. Then item 2.06, consideration approved the renewal agreement with ESGI. And this is the digital platform that we use really to administer and house our formative and summative assessments. And then we also use this platform for reporting purposes uh, for our primary grades. Item 2.07, consideration of the resolution to request 1003 flexibility waiver. Uh, We did this several years ago when the General Assembly enacted legislation that would allow school corporations to receive waiver compliance from various uh, Uh, provisions that are set forth in Title 20, which really covers uh, school law in Indiana. So we are asking for that 
uh, flexibility once again, which really does tie into, I think, item 2.08. So, Jason, you want to talk about the school calendar just a bit? Yeah, 2.08, really 2.09, two items, Dr. Smith. There's been change in legislation this year. It'll take effect. Uh, it impacts the way Indiana school districts utilize virtual instruction. And so for a virtual day to count towards the 180-day state requirement, has to be over 50% synchronous instruction. When we talk about synchronous, we're talking about your live back and forth with the teacher. There's not any type of recording being done. So um, that for us, we see in, in some regards could be difficult for some students, especially young students. So that got us thinking about this. So um, Indiana districts do get three days for school districts where you can design the day. So it doesn't necessarily have to be 50% or more synchronous instruction. So we know we have those three um, and those could be for days we have to close in-person instruction due to winter weather, for example, or or maybe for professional development activities. But with this change that's caused us to look back at the calendar, we had two of those days built in, one in October, one in March for professional development. And if we utilize uh, two of the three that districts have a choice, that could put us potentially in a bit of a bind in the winter if we have a, a snowy winter, for example. And so looked at that and decided if we were going to have to do over 50% synchronous, that could be not only problematic for our youngest students, but if we're really going to try to build in quality professional development or collaboration time for teachers, there's not going to be much of a, a day left for that by the time you do that. So what we've done is looked at, first of all, filing a waiver to uh, allow us to keep our soft start in place. That's at the beginning of the year when we have half of our students at a time, really helps with relationship building. And then in addition to that waiver, that's 2.07, 2.08, um, we went back to the calendar and asked the board, the calendar they had approved to remove those two professional development days again in October and in March. Um, and we feel like this will really allow us to utilize these days and be prepared for winter weather uh, and still follow the new state statute. Very good. And we still will utilize uh, what we have in the past. Absolutely. Uh, basically where we would have uh, teachers that would provide instruction and then Certainly. would also be available during office hours throughout the week then to help students. That is correct. That work. But um, that does not, that no longer counts beyond threes. Right. And again, the state of Indiana requires 180 days. We have to meet those standards to make sure that every day counts towards that. Yeah. Very good. So then moving on to item 2.09, consideration for the Potter's Will Addendum for Summer School. Potter's Will is a great community partner with Glenwood Leadership Academy. Their agreement with Glenwood was scheduled to end at the end of the school year, but now we'd like to extend that so that it, we have the uh, benefit of their services through summer school. Then item 2.10, consideration to amend the 2019-2023 contract driver agreement. So I think many of our public uh, may not realize that we have two sets of bus drivers. We have EVSC bus drivers, and then we have EVSC contract bus drivers. The difference is, is that the EVSC contract bus drivers are really independent contractors. They own their bus. We provide the routing information and all of that for them, but uh, they own the bus and they have the insurance and all of those things, all those responsibilities and maintenance. And then when we have EVSC bus drivers, those are our employees. So our promise has always been to EVSC or to the contract drivers that if we were able to provide an increase to our EVSC employees, that we would provide a similar increase to them also. So this is basically going in and memorializing that. So our contract bus drivers, of which there are 60, will receive a check for retro pay for last year, and then we'll receive a 4% increase uh, for next year. So uh, appreciate what they do for us. Um, and, and really, our students and families don't really know the difference. They don't. It's a yellow school bus. It's a dedicated driver who builds relationships with kids and drives a bus safely. So it's not really for them to worry about, but we definitely want to respect all of our drivers. Completely agree. And I think that's just another great service that we provide. And, and I appreciate the fact that they do such in a professional manner that you cannot tell the difference between an EVSC bus driver and a contract driver. Correct. Moving on to 2.11, consideration approved the agreement with Go Guardian and Riverside Technology. So Go Guardian is the service that we use for uh, web content filtering and classroom management tools uh, and safety features. And then finally, under consent item 2.12, consideration to approve the addendum to the collective bargain agreement with ETA. So uh, we just 
recently announced that all of our employees would receive twice the increase that they were anticipating for next year. So for teachers, instead of advancing them one step on the two different career pathways that we have, uh, we announced that we were going to advance them two steps. So what this does for teachers that have either taught for us this year for less than 120 days or for teachers coming into us brand new for next year, uh, they're going to receive $1,500 more than they thought they were going to receive. Uh, so when you look at our starting salary of one of uh, 41.5 for folks on Career Path 1 or 43000 on Career Path 2, plus our other benefits, health insurance and all the other things, 401A, 403B, or VIVAs, uh, we are incredibly competitive in this entire region. And I would suggest uh, the very best in this entire region when you put all of that package together. And we are very, very happy to do that. And we continue to strive to provide uh, more of um, compensation in all varieties uh, for all of our employees. And I, I've heard you say many times, you know, we think about retention and in recruitment. Retention, yes. we want to keep the talented educators we have. Recruitment, we want new educators or even experienced educators somewhere else to consider EVSC. As you've said, we want the best and the brightest working with our local children here in Vandenberg County, and we're going to do everything it takes to make us the employer of choice for anyone wanting to work in this Absolutely. field. Absolutely. Made tremendous strides in the last few years, and that will continue. Item 3.01, and as we always say, those personnel recommendations are there for your perusal. Okay, and then that takes us to core curriculum and student development. Last night, a presentation by Dr. Andy Owen, middle school athletic proposal, and I thought this was really interesting and exciting an opportunity for our students. Talk to us about that if yes. you would, please. This is a proposal that was developed by uh, Dr. Owen as well as Lakita Hart, who does a phenomenal job with her middle school athletic program. And has for many years. Yes, <laughs> she has yes, yes, yes. Great history. 30 with plus us. years. Yes. Um, and this really does recognize that all of our teams are part of programs. So specifically what this is, is it is going to be uh, piloting an attendance district eighth grade uh, Cub basketball and wrestling program for both boy and girl student athletes. Um, so I think that that is very exciting. Uh, the athletic seasons for the Cub boys basketball will run from October through December. Cub girls basketball then will run from January to March, and the Cub wrestling will be also from January to March. And then uh, North Junior High is going to have some additional teams. So when you think about it, we have five traditional high school attendance districts. We have, uh, and Andy did a great job of, of kind of relaying this last night, Bossy has uh, two K-8s and then a middle school and then two elementary schools. And that is very similar to what Central has with two K-8s, a middle school, and two elementary schools. Harrison and Wrights both have the high school, they have two middle schools, and then they have four elementary schools, and then North has yet a third different configuration. They have a high school, and then they have one junior high, seventh and eighth grade, and then they have six elementaries that are K-6s instead of K-5s. So what this then does for the North junior additional teams is it will offer additional seventh and eighth grade teams for volleyball and girls and boys basketball, and it will designate two teams by attendance district. So the North junior green team will be composed of students from Oak Hill, Evans, and Scott. And then the North junior high white team will be composed of students from McCutcheonville, Delaware, and Vogel. So when you think about it, we have some smaller schools that, for instance, some of our K-8s, they may have only 30 students in a grade level. Well, when you have an eighth grade basketball team, you may only have 15, 20 students to pick from whereas North Junior has probably 450 eighth graders, so let's say 225 uh, males. So the chances of making the eighth grade boys basketball team would be certainly different there. So this just provides additional opportunity uh, for both North Junior as well as the Cub teams then for uh, our elementary and middle or the uh the K-8 students. And you know, it's exciting too, when you when you talk to Dr. Owen about this, of course, he has so many years experience as a head coach. He really understands too what it means for students, what it means, as you said, for those programs, because if we want 
ultra competitive high school teams and for that experience for our students, we know we have to create those experiences even more so as they're coming up um, and developing through the middle school years and just giving more students opportunities to have more competitive opportunities is only going to be better for them as a development of an a- as an athlete. Well, I think that is key because you have to have the opportunities first, then you have to have access to the opportunities. But we do know that uh, individuals that have opportunities to be involved with those athletic uh, events and, and teams, it's so good for our students to have those opportunities and then to have the relationships with their coaches. Uh, it's just a win for everybody. And we've also seen, too, and Dr. Owen is very aware of this, too. Sometimes when you have that situation with smaller schools playing a really large school, you may have a, a result of a game that's just it's not competitive because it's just not possible to do so. That's not good for either team. It's not good for the team that's winning by a large margin because it's not developing them. And it's not really good for the students that are on the losing side of that either. No, this is a this is a win for everybody. Definitely. Yeah. Exciting news. So, and then that takes us to action items yeah. from last action night. We had two of them. Item 5.01 and 5.02. Both of these were information items in the previous board meeting. 5.01 basically is consideration to award the contract for the Highland Elementary School parking lot. That was discussed in the previous board recap, and all of the information is there for the uh, viewing audience to see. Then also the board approved uh, the food bid award last night. So we are happy that both of those have been completed. And, and, uh, then, uh, and then last night, no information items. That doesn't happen on a regular basis, but just right. worked out last night. There were no information items. That takes us to continued business. And you asked Dr. Stubbs last night to come up and give an update on the upcoming summer school program. Yes, uh, we have a very robust summer school program this summer, as we have for several summers. Uh, it will involve more than 2,400 students. And just to put that, I think, within the context of what that looks like, Half of the school districts in Indiana have 2,000 or fewer students. So we're running a summer school that basically is greater than the number of students that are in totality, half of our uh, Indiana school districts. And I simply say that because it is a major undertaking that I think sometimes we just take for granted, but it's a major undertaking to hire approximately 200 teachers uh, to make certain that all the students have buses routed to make certain that we have the drivers and the assistants there, uh, food service, and all of our facilities having to make certain that we can accommodate all of these activities being done in our school. So just hats off to everybody and the opportunities that we provide our students during the summer. And certainly grateful for those employees who choose to teach and lead those programs in the summer because without them, we wouldn't be able to offer those opportunities to students. Absolutely. So it, it truly is a win for all of yeah. them. And then just as we wrap up, I think you left it with the board last night, Dr. Smith, that the next time you and I do one of these, after the next school board meeting, we will have been on the other side of high school commencements. Yeah, amazing. Uh, but two weeks from yesterday, two weeks from Monday, May the 9th, we start our commencement uh, ceremonies. So with nine of our uh, high schools having eight different ceremonies, that is always an exciting week. It's also a very busy week. And I will tell you, Wednesday, about 10 o'clock, I will know that we've had a very, very, very busy half week. But uh, looking forward to those commencement exercises with everybody together in person. It will be another one of those lots of smile events. It's a true celebration. We hope for great weather because we love doing those outdoors when we can. Uh, and looking forward to that. So that wraps up last night's board meeting. Thank you very much, Dr. Smith. Thank you.